Hello everyone and welcome to the Winecast. We're back to tackling another single grape varietal, and this time I thought we'd take a shot at Spain's signature grape, Tempranillo, or the little early one as its name means in Spanish. Tempranillo is almost certainly native to Spain, though how far back the varietal goes is less clear. It could go back more than 2,000 years to the era when the Phoenicians brought grape vines to Spain as part of their colonization of the southern Iberian Peninsula. Though the mutations that resulted in what we now call Tempranillo would have happened in Spain, the grape has its roots, so to speak, in those early vines and varietals from the eastern Mediterranean that the Phoenicians schlepped with them. Appropriately enough for a grape with a history of traveling ancestors, Tempranillo itself is widely traveled, having found niches throughout the world, but the great majority of its plantings are still in Iberia. These days, it's the fourth most planted wine grape varietal in the world, up from 24th and 10th places over the last two decades. By a large margin, most plantings are on the Iberian Peninsula, with over 200,000 hectares, or about half a million acres, planted in Spain, primarily in the Rioja and Ribera del Duero regions, and much smaller plantings in neighboring Portugal, with smaller plantings still found in Argentina, France, and the U.S. The plantings in countries like Myanmar and Thailand are minuscule when compared to even the small acreage in the United States. Tempranillo makes up a large percentage of the total grapes planted in these and other nations that are emerging as wine producers. In both Spain and Portugal, Tempranillo is blessed, or cursed depending on your perspective, with a slew of regional synonyms that it's worth becoming familiar with if you're nurturing an interest in Spanish wines. In Rioja, it's known by the name that it goes by almost everywhere else in the world, Tempranillo. But in nearby Ribera del Duero, another very important region for this grape, it's called Tinto Fino, as well as Tinta del País, a name that it's also known by in neighboring Sigales. Meanwhile, in Toro, a little farther south, it's called Tinta de Toro, making for a nice, if shameless, bit of local boosterism. Farther south still, in the La Mancha and Valdepeñas regions, you'll hear it called Sensibel, while it answers to Morisca in the Extremadura region of western Spain. And we can't forget its name in the wine powerhouse that is Catalonia, where it's known as Old de Lebre, which, fun fact, means Eye of the Hair in the local language of Catalan. Did I forget anything? Oh yeah, Portugal, where it's generally known as Aragonés in a nod to its Spanish origins, and Tinta Roriz in the port-producing region of the Douro Valley. That's a lot to keep track of, so here are the synonyms in chart form. More and more, especially for bottles aimed at markets outside of Spain, the name Tempranillo will appear on the label regardless of the region, but the other names will often appear alongside Tempranillo or just there on their own. So knowing the various synonyms is still a plus in terms of having a clear picture in your mind of what you're buying and what you're drinking. As the name implies, Tempranillo is an early ripening grape. It does well in cooler climates, especially in hilly regions with some altitude to them. It's not an especially aromatic grape, but what aromas and flavors are there tend toward the red end of the fruit spectrum, with strawberry being a particularly common descriptor. Notes of spice, especially baking spices like allspice and clove turn up, as well as a characteristic note that tasters often identify as dust or chalk. Because of its neutral character, Tempranillo takes well to oak treatments, and while not universal, they're very, very common. For historical reasons, American oak was the wood of choice in Spain for aging Tempranillo, but more and more producers in Rioja and elsewhere have been experimenting with French oak. Oak and the accompanying aging will bring leather and tobacco aromas to the party, and if the oak was American, look for some coconut and dill, as well as some vanilla that any oak treatment will deliver. When made as a true single varietal, Tempranillo will tend toward producing wines with medium to low acidity, medium to high tannin, but yet with a light body. These characteristics have led Tempranillo to benefit from having some blending partners to even things out, and the classic grapes to invite to the blending ball are Grenache, Carignan, or Masuelo as it's usually called in Spain, and the very Spanish Graciano. The consensus is that Tempranillo generally gets a bump from aging, and, as I've mentioned in another cast, the Spanish take aging very seriously. Tempranillos from Spain will usually have some age on them and conform to one of three categories, crianza, reserva, or gran reserva, each with specific minimum amounts of time that the wine must spend on oak or aging in the bottle. 
The chart here lists the times for wine from Rioja and Ribera del Duero, which have their own aging regimen that's slightly stricter than the one for other Spanish bottles. For more information on that regimen, check out the cast on Spanish wine quality designations. These aren't super common with Tempranillo-based wines from Spain, but just in case, if you run into a bottle labeled Roble or Semicrianza, it means that the wine is seen some time on oak, but not enough to qualify for the Crianza designation. And wines with Vino Joven, Acero, or Sin Crianza imply that the wine hasn't been in oak at all. So, what should you try first if you want to get to know this grape? Start with Rioja, obviously, as it's a benchmark for this grape. Most Riojas are blends, but they're driven by solid majorities of Tempranillo and just a little Grenache, Masuelo, Graciano, or a few others to square things away. There are some great bargains to be found in Rioja, but don't hesitate to spend a little more, and be sure to do some research to find a wine that really showcases what this grape is about. Don't shy away from the rest of Spain, though, especially from Ribera del Duero, Rioja's underappreciated neighbor to the south. Some people consider the hilliness and altitude of the region an even more ideal climate to grow Tempranillo in than Rioja. And for what it's worth, Riberas tend to have a little more Tempranillo in the bottle than do Riojas, with a lot of examples of 90 to 100% Tempranillo Ribera del Duero out there. Also, don't pass up some of the interesting things going on in other regions of Spain, including the Vino de la Tierra regions that are equivalent to the European Union's PGI areas. Portugal grows the next largest amount of Tempranillo, but most of it ends up in ports or other blends, and it's not usually the dominant partner. So unless you can find a wine labeled Aragonés or Tinta Roriz, it'll be hard to get a sense of Tempranillo as a grape from Portuguese wines. If you can find them, check out Argentine Tempranillos, especially those grown around Mendoza, for another example of this grape at a high altitude. In the U.S., Tempranillo is found in niche up and down the West Coast in Washington, Oregon, and California. And you should definitely try Tempranillos from these states. But if you can find one, and it's no easy task unless you live there, try a Tempranillo from Texas. Word on the street is that the grape is doing some interesting things in parts of the Lone Star State that have climates and geographies similar to Rioja and Ribera. And though the number of planted acres is tiny, Tempranillo may be on its way to becoming Texas' signature grape. Thanks again for joining me for another Winecast. I hope you found it informative, interesting, and helpful to whatever stage of the wine journey you're on. If so, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I always love to hear from my listeners in the comments. I'm your host, The Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly.